If you're visiting Istanbul soon, here I share the most common mistakes tourists make when visiting the city, so that it won't happen to you too. Believing that everybody in Istanbul will speak English, and this is a big misconception because many people, when they come here, are expecting that everybody will be able to understand them and communicate with every tourist in English, but the reality is totally different. Maybe in the most visited areas like Sultanahmet, Taksim Square, and maybe the most visited cities or regions like Cappadocia, Antalya, Ephesus, yeah, you might find people, locals, that might be able to speak English, even in some parts, also languages like Spanish or even Arabic. But don't expect that every person will, will be able to speak to you in English. That is why we recommend you to learn at least the basic phrases for you to be able to communicate with locals. Like, for example, hello, how much is this? How can I get to the metro station? And little basic uh, phrases. The next one is taking the hop on hop off bus first bus and I'm not saying that in fact it is bad because to be honest it is not bad. The only thing that I'm saying is that pay attention to the time you're planning on taking this bus and this is because let's remember that Istanbul is a very chaotic city especially at peak hours. Uh, especially if you're planning on taking it between 4 maybe to 6 p.m. trust me that will be not the most suitable thing to do so just pay attention to the timings maybe you can do it very early morning maybe around 10 10 30 that will be ideal because most of people are in their office at schools so you will not be stuck in traffic also pay attention on weekends because also weekends here in the city usually is when also the locals tend to go uh, go out, visit friends, visit family. So the city is much more crowded and the traffic is almost impossible. So maybe in some other cities, it's a great option. I have done it in Toledo in Spain with my parents. And to be honest, in Toledo was a great choice. And also it's a great option for those who cannot walk for, for, for a long time and maybe they just want to get into this bus and get to places easier. But in Istanbul, the situation is a little bit different. So that's why you need to pay attention to that. Traveling in Istanbul in a huge group with maybe 25 or even up to 50 people at the same time. And I'm not saying this is bad, but the reality is that it will not be as comfortable as you believe it to be. And many people I know, they, they prefer this type of tours because first of all, they are much more affordable than private tours or even smaller group tours. But even for example, let's imagine that you're visiting a place and you would like to stay a bit longer to see more of the place and even take some photos more likely you will not be allowed to do that because you are depending in the other 25 30 people or 50 people so you have to be moving really quick in order to to finish the circuit of that of that tour and when it comes to the restaurants as well take into consideration that when you are traveling in a big group uh, usually these tours what they have to do is that they have to choose a specific restaurants where they will be able to receive big groups of tourists so usually there are not very good restaurants and they also already have fixed menu for these groups so you will not be able to try more authentic places and even foods in the city while taking those type of tours but don't worry because i have a, a solution for you if you really want to to discover istanbul in a much more authentic way and basically in a tour that will be focused only in you and you will be the one in charge of the time then also you can check our tours that we are giving with my husband who happens to be a, a certified tourist guide in istanbul and some other provinces of turkey so you can take a, a private tour with us so i'll be i'll be sharing the link in the description box and pinned comment Visiting Istanbul in high season, especially when it comes to summer season, when it, when it is between maybe late, late May to all the way to mid-September. And I am telling you this because unless you don't really have time to choose or to be flexible on your traveling dates, then you have to expect that when you come to, to Istanbul, more likely you will find huge lines to visit the main attractions like the Blue Mosque, Hagia and even top Kapu palace and as well the accommodation will be much more expensive so that is why if you're flexible in traveling to istanbul we highly recommend you to do it in low season like for example right now which is november end of november and to be honest there's not much tourism going around even there, there's no line at all to enter Hagia sophia another thing to keep in mind is that if you're planning on traveling to istanbul pay attention to the national holidays especially like those festivals or holidays like for example the 
Ramadan or even the sacrifice feast, usually is when locals also have uh, holidays and days off from, from their office and schools. So of course, every place, not just in Istanbul, but all around Turkey, all of the places like beaches, hotels, and every attraction is very full. So unless you really want to experience the, the spirit of Ramadan season, because to be honest, visiting Istanbul during this season is, is very interesting because you can learn a lot about the Ramadan. But unless you don't want to be with with a lot of crowds and, and everything, then I suggest not coming during that time. Going abroad and eating at only famous chain restaurants. And this is a very common mistake that I see. And I cannot understand that why some people try to do it because they believe that the, that it is much more affordable than even eating at local restaurants in any country they're, they're visiting. But to be honest, when it comes to Istanbul, there is not much difference between this uh, international chain restaurants like fast food restaurants to local restaurants so basically you can spend almost the same amount of money and but you will be able to to try authentic foods of Istanbul so that is what I'm, I'm telling you unless that you're craving for something because maybe you have been here in the city for maybe months and you would like to try not only kebabs or the or the Turkish uh, foods and you want something different then just go for it but to be honest, if it is like your first time and you're traveling uh, for just a few days, I highly recommend you to instead look for more local restaurants. Not calling Turkish foods accordingly. And I'm saying this because let's remember that some Turkish foods are very similar to other foods in different countries, especially the Middle Eastern countries or Greece. So many people, for example, when they come here, instead of calling a doner, uh, they call it shawarma, for example, or even they call it uh, gyros or hiros. To be honest, I don't know how to pronounce it in, in Greek. So please do the proper research and call the foods accordingly, depending on the country you are visiting. And it's not that maybe people will get mad at you if you call it like uh, or can you give me a shawarma in, in, in Turkey. But to be honest, like some people can take it like in a bit disrespectful. That is why it is important for us as travelers, our tourists, to do the proper research beforehand and even try to learn the correct names of the foods we are going to try in that new country. For example, in this case, I just ordered for myself one pita doner. And I'm not gonna call this one shawarma or gyros because it is not, at least not in Turkey, in, in Turkey. So here we call them doner, pita doner or doner duro. So please call them accordingly. This not only happens with doner or with the shawarma or the kiddos, this also happens very often and because we have heard this, like tourists uh, ordering, for example, yogurt. Instead of saying yogurt, they say Greek yogurt. And let me tell you that this is a very sensitive topic when it comes to baklava, to especially yogurt between Greece and, and Turkey. So that is why here in, in the country, don't say Greek yogurt. Just state yogurt, that's it. And the next one is about how to have internet in Turkey. I know that in many of my previous videos, I have I have suggested what local companies in the country you can purchase your, your package. However, I have found a better option for you and that way you won't have to be dealing in looking for a, for a place in Istanbul to purchase your package. And let's be honest, also, even though it is the same brand, you will have to pay different prices because at the end of the day, they are franchise and they don't really respect the prices just for the brand. So if you want to avoid all of these and losing time in looking for a proper place, then I highly recommend you to get the famous e-SIMs. In case that you don't know what is an e-SIM, basically you, ju you just go online. There are many different uh, brands that you can purchase them with, but I personally have been using Airalo. Airalo is a great company that um, in my previous uh, travels, I have been using it. And also just recently, like uh, two weeks ago, I was traveling in Japan and South Korea and I was using it and it worked wonders. So basically, as soon as we landed, we like uh, our plane just landed, we, we just turned it on, activated it. And with it, within 10, 15 minutes, we were able to already use our internet. 
The only thing that you have to keep in mind is to make sure that your mobile, like your phone, actually supports these eSIMs. And also with your carrier, you have to make sure that it's not blocked. But that can be easily fixed because if, you're, if it's only blocked by your phone carrier in your home country, you can just give them a call and, and inform them that you have to unblock your, your phone to be able to use an eSIM. And because I have been using this service for quite a while and I love the service, that is why I have also a kit for my audience. And in case that you want to purchase this eSIM with Airalo, I will be giving you a coupon to get a 10% in any purchase you do there. So if you want to, to get that 10% off, I will be leaving the link in the description box of this video and the pinned comment. This is one of the biggest mistakes that I see tons of tourists making when they are visiting Hagia Sophia mosque and any other mosque. And this is not removing the shoes before they step onto the carpet. Let's remember that every time we visit any sacred place like mosques, we need to remove the shoes before stepping on the carpet. So this is something that I see very often, even though there are some signs uh, like uh, telling tourists, please do not step on the carpet, remove your, your shoes outside. They still don't do it and they just pass it away and they're stepping on the carpet. So please be respectful of this rule. Inform yourself before visiting sacred places. What is the etiquette? We cannot visit places just without not knowing anything. So please pay attention to your surroundings and I know that uh, especially when, when the mosque is very, very crowded, there are some, uh, some people telling others to please not to step on the carpet. But I guess we don't have to tell you this, you just have to act just as other people does. So just uh, look at, at locals, how they are doing everything and just follow their lead. And another mistake that can be a bit annoying, especially for locals and those ones who are just going back home after a long day of work, is hearing tourists or in general any person speaking very loudly in the tram. That is why we recommend you that as soon as you are inside a metro, a bus or any mosque as well, please try to keep your voice a little bit moderate. This doesn't mean that you cannot speak. Yes, of course you can speak, but let's try to moderate our voice volume. Another experience that we have seen uh, here in Istanbul, it's that some people are trying to get these bicycle tours in the old peninsula. But let's be honest, here Istanbul is not a bicycle friendly place, not as some other places in Europe. So here, to be honest, I wouldn't recommend it. And the main reason is because one, the vehicles, they don't really respect uh, bicycles. And secondly, this area where usually they do the tours is one of the most crowded and frequented places of the city, which is around Eminonu Sirkeji. And also it's a bit difficult because people are not just walking on the sidewalks, but also in the middle of the road. So it gets quite, quite difficult, especially on weekends or peak hours. So I wouldn't suggest doing that. The next one will be buying these candies at this very popular shop, not just in Istanbul, but in many other cities of Europe. And this one is Captain Candy. I see many people uh, being overhyped about this store, but to be honest, it's not even Turkish. I mean, it's not authentic. You will not get those flavors. So that is why instead, if you want to buy something sweet, something delicious as well, and something that is from Turkey, I will highly recommend you just to walk a couple of, of meters away and you will find one of the best, best shops to buy Lokum or the Turkish Delight. And here you're not only buying good flavor, but also you're buying history. Let's remember that Turkey is one of those countries where bargaining is part of their culture. But also, I have seen some visitors or tourists that are trying to, to, to go so intense into this bargaining custom. Yes, you can do it, and of course, locals will be up to it, but also you need to be a little bit more relaxed about it. And also, I have seen some, some people trying to bargain not only in the bazaars, but also they try to bargain for every service they are receiving, and also inside the shop in malls it's that doesn't mean that it's not allowed but it is funny so 
basically here the custom is that you can bargain, for example, in local bazaars, in street bazaars, inside the Grand Bazaar, Spice Bazaar, or even at the shops around the Spice Bazaar, like in Eminonu neighborhood. But other th than that, I wouldn't suggest it calling the Bosphorus a river and I am trying to explain this because it is good to know what exactly it is the Bosphorus. So the Bosphorus in reality it is not a, a river it is a, a strait or a canal that is connecting two seas. In this case the Sea of Marmara and the Black Sea. It is a natural strait and also it divides Istanbul into two parts the European side and the Asian side but it is it is incorrect calling it a river. So these were some of the most common mistakes that I see tourists making in Istanbul. Let us know in comments below what others you would like to add to the list so also others can read them and take them into consideration. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this about Istanbul and Turkey every week. See you next time. Bye-bye.